The 1998 Winston Cup champion, there's the banner above the pit stall. Jeff Gordon is the champion, but we have a race to run, and the Napa 500 is underway. that Kenny Irwin Jr. has led. He last led at the Pepsi 400 at Daytona. But look at Dale Jarrett as he comes up on the inside of Irwin down the backstretch. And Dale Jarrett takes the lead into the backstretch. Well, he had got a run coming off of turn two and had the momentum he needed to power by that other Robert Gates car. And right behind these guys, you see Nemechek trying to get by the 12 car of Jeremy Mayfield. Moves him in the seventh spot. And right behind him, we can almost see that car back. That's Jeff Gordon, who has moved into the ninth spot from his starting spot of 21st. Well, he has nothing to lose here this afternoon. The championship is not on the line. He's already wrapped that up, so you know he's going to drive his heart out. There is his uh, movement toward the front after starting in 21st position. Now up into the top 10 in ninth. Just turned on your TV. We had a rain delay here at the Napa 500, but back to green flag. The track is okay, and Jeff Gord's car is moving. He's battling Mike Skinner for seventh position. The cars wheel to wheel as they go down the back stretch and through turn number three, and now Gordon completes the pass and has seven. is a little over seven seconds behind the leader Dale Jarrett. There is Dale Jarrett and he continues to stretch the lead. It's now up to two seconds over Ward Burton who is running in second position having started from that spot. Kenny Irwin Jr. the pole sitter is back in third and Bobby Labonte and Mark Martin. And the caution flag is out. I'm sure this is for rain. Just a few sprinkles that will go away. Starting to get pretty hard now. Not news that we wanted to hear. No, certainly isn't. But I'm sure there's a lot of cars going to be making some pit stops. He's up a little short now. Down the cherry punch. Right they are going to take a half a round out of the left rear in Dale Jarrett's uh, car number 88. You heard the spotter saying a sprinkle of rain. It sprinkled for about a lap or so. Now it's lightening up a little bit. Jarrett hitting right behind his teammate, Kenny Irwin. Both the Robert Gates teams now will change four tires. Left side tires already going on the 88 car. Brad Parrott, Todd Parrott, the crew. And the 88 off the jack. Great pit stop for the quality care team. Likewise, Kenny Irwin at Slugger Labby and Company hitting as they head down pit road behind the 22 car of Ward Burton. You see Jarrett, Ward Burton, Mark Martin. Here comes uh -oh. it's Kenny Irwin and then Jeff Gordon, Joe Nemechek, Jeff Bodine. Good stop for the Phillips Electronics team. Here comes Jeff Burton pulling out of his pit stall. Ooh, a little heavy right there. Traffic. getting sorted out here and lining up for what hopefully will be a very short caution period and we can get back to racing but it looks like the uh, rain slickers are coming out. Yes they are. It looks like looking over the back stretch that I do see some rain coming this way. That's what you hate to see at a racetrack an umbrella. So the cars are now coming down pit road and stopping as we wait this little shower out. Cover the cars huh? Try to keep them as dry as possible. Mike Skinner says, I think I'll get out. The crowd goes wild, and at about 20 minutes till 10 o'clock Eastern time, the green is back out at Atlanta. Oh, Jeff Bodine is slow on the restart. 
Brett Bodine trying to, there we see these two cars that are trying to get their laps back. Brett Bodine trying to stay in front of Jeff Gordon, but look at Gordon come through the middle of this corner. Boy, he's closing in quickly and will take the opportunity to make a pass coming off quarter number four, and Jeff Gordon will lead lap number 87. Speed is reduced as the caution comes out for the mandatory pit stop. And once again, Kyle Petty, he was the next car to be lapped by Jeff Gordon, and Kyle <laughs> remains on the lead lap, so the caution saved him once again. He survived another one. Really strange. We don't we don't have any cars one lap down. We have 33 cars on the lead lap. We don't have any cars one lap down. We have one car two laps down, and the rest of them are three or four laps down. That one car that's two laps down is Gary Bradbury in 34th position. And three cars out of the race, Nemechek, David Green, and Sterling Marlin. Bobby Labonte is still listed as not out of the race, but they continue to work on the car. And we see the green flag waving. Pit road is open, and here they come, all the leaders. Here's John Kernan with Morgan Shepard's pit stop. Morgan all the way up in the sixth position. Yesterday I saw him walking through the garage area with a big smile on his face. The car's pretty good. In fact, they're only taking right side tires, lowering the air pressure. Jim Long, stand, the crew chief, stands up on the pit box watching the work. Now let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Last pit stop, they tried to take some of the push out by changing the, the track bar and putting air pressure change in the right rear. Now they're going back the other way. Watch if the car is too loose. Let's go down to Bill Weber. So far, flawless stop for Jeff Gordon. Four tires going on. A lot of guys racing out of the pit road early. Must have just taken two tires. Gordon got the bullet on the 94. Mike Skinner wins the race on pit road. The 99 also is back out in the mix. All of those guys that took two tires will come out ahead of Gordon and Jeff Burton as they took on four. Here comes Morgan Shepard by Spencer. Here comes the 24 car, Jeff Gordon. He has those four fresh tires. Does he have enough time to get to the front? Oh, he just moves on the inside of Morgan Shepard. It's a battle for sixth position as Morgan Shepard is up on the top and contact between the two and Morgan is hard into the wall. Oh, that's too bad. Wow. Hard in the wall. Stay up there, Morgan. Okay, I hope everybody else goes above him now. Well, he was fortunate he didn't get hit as he stepped back down across the racetrack. They're still racing back to the flag here. Mike Skinner wins the race back to the flag. With Todd Bodine second across the line, followed by Dale Earnhardt. Boy, your concern right now has to be Morgan Shepard because that car hit the wall so hard it got airborne for a moment. And we can see that there's just, just some contact between he and Jeff Gordon as he got down in turn one. Morgan trying to get to the bottom of the racetrack. Jeff was down there and look up. Heavy, heavy contact. Take a look at the replay of it as the safety officials go to the aid of Morgan Shepard. Here it is. There we see Jeff Gordon trying to make the pass on the inside to get down the corner. Morgan comes down mm, and we see the contact and bam. Well, he did hit it hard. There we see another angle. You know, Morgan Shepard was just trying his best. He knew that this was his chance, Ned, to show that Morgan Shepard could still do the job. Yep, had a good finish in the making. But boy, it didn't take much, although they, they hit pretty good. And uh, into that wall, he went hard. We'll look out for Mark Martin's windshield. Wow, in just a flash, it happens. Well, we understand that Morgan is talking to his crew on the radio. Wow, that's that is, good news. That is fantastic news. Sure is. Don't you know those first two guys would just love to win this race? How about Kenny Schrader back in four spot? Dick Trickle in fifth. Well, all of those drivers need to win now. There's there several of them who have never won, including those two up front. Well, maybe Bernhard can end the season the way he began it. Mike Skinner's best career finish third. He's done that on two occasions, most recently at the Pepsi 400 at Daytona. 
and trickle goes by Schrader. Schrader gets back down right in front of Jeff Gordon. So he's able to get back on the low line. Mike Skinner got himself a good jump. Remember, all those cars in front of Gordon only took two tires. Gordon took four. Jeff moves to the inside of Kenny, coming off of quarter number four through the quad oval area, across the line, and Gordon will pick up the spot on Ken Schrader. And now here comes Dale Jarrett. Now he's going to lose a couple more spots as Jarrett comes along. Evidently, those two tires made make a difference. I mean, four tires make a difference in speed, which we suspected that. But would they have enough time to get back to the front? Lord Gordon is charging hard. He sure is. Now he looks to the inside of Dick Trickle coming off corner number four. Jarrett took a look on the inside of Gordon. Oh, and he's yeah. there. He's there. Gordon stands on the gas on the outside. Can he maintain that spot? Jarrett is still there. He's got position. This is the battle for fifth spot. They are wheel to wheel, and now Jeff's going to have to lift because he came up behind Dick Trickle, and Jarrett takes over the fourth spot. He is a fender ahead of the 90 car. Clear, all clear. Keep digging, buddy. Go bring That's it to the Fifth, sixth. Right now, hey, Rocky, Jeff Gordon. Down through there. Jeff Gordon is battling for that fifth spot. It is still Mike Skinner up front with Todd Bodine second and Dale Earnhardt third. Dale Jarrett is coming up quickly though on Earnhardt. And Earnhardt moves to the inside. Jarrett's going to the outside. Can Dale pull off the pass up high? Yes, he can. All clear. That's the way. Pass him on the outside. <laughs> Suits me. And here comes Jeff Gordon to the low side of Dale Earnhardt. Out for four spot. And Bobby Hamilton is still moving toward the front. That is unbelievable. Well, there's a real jumble back there. All those cars racing position. Including Kenny Schrader and Mark Martin, Bobby Hamilton, Dick Trickle. Here's the battle now for second position as Jarrett has gone to the inside of Todd Bodine. They go through the first and second corners and All Jarrett. Clear. Way to go, the last, Way to get go. Second. The last time by, Mike Skinner ran an average 184 well, miles per hour. Well, Dale Jarrett ran 187 miles per hour the last time by. A week from tomorrow, Dale Jarrett will be in a surgical suite having those gallstones removed, but that's the furthest thing from his mind now as he's in a position to win the Napa 500. Jeff Gordon is saying to Mike Skinner, just hold him up for a few minutes. Hold him up for a few minutes while I get there. Looking back from Mike Skinner's car. Now Jarrett makes the move out of corner number time. two. 24 coming. Down the back stretch, he's caught him. Jarrett clear. leads. And this could be the manufacturer's championship. It is at stake. If a Ford wins, it wins the championship. If a Chevrolet wins, the Chevrolet wins. And here comes Gordon. He's got four fresh tires, too. And he moves to second, passing Mike Skinner. Skinner hanging tough, though, on the outside. We've got 10 laps to go. <laughs> yeah, but he's coming on the back of that car right now. He is gaining. Looking for 13 wins in 1998. Nine to go. Nine. And this is the way it should end for the Manufacturer Championship. Whoever wins this race will be the champion. And look at this mess for position. They are still scrambling. Two by two. Here's Todd Bodine and Mike Skinner battling for third. Bodine's got it. And Todd Bodine takes the unsponsored car to third spot. Passing Skinner on the outside. Meanwhile, the eight laps to go this time. Eight to go, eight. It's a 
familiar sight for 1998 as so many times we have seen up front the 88 the 24 and the six right now Mark Martin is in sixth position the battle is between Jarrett and Gordon. In fact, it looks like that Jeff Gordon isn't able to close in on Dale Jarrett. Schrader and Dale Earnhardt now swap eighth position make that the Schrader car now in eighth. Earnhardt back to ninth. Gordon's got to run. Couldn't quite get up beside him. Boy, did he come off the turn two that time. There will be six laps to go when they cross the line. And now Jeff's got a good run also coming off corner number four. They come down in front of the main grandstand. They're side by side, and Gordon has the lead. Oh, and Jared gets a little bit loose. He has to chase the car up the hill. Can Jared get back on the No, he can't. Five to go. If Gordon wins, he ties the record of 13 wins in a season established by the King, Richard Petty, in 1975. Neil Jared said his car is tight. Just said right then. Five laps to go, and there's a lot of battling going on between. Bobby Hamilton, Jeff Burton, Mark Martin, and Mike Skinner. And Martin gets the spot from Skinner. Puts him in, puts him in fourth spot. And on the battle for sixth. Burton trying to take it away from Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton hasn't been passed many times. He's done, he has passed perhaps more race cars than anybody yeah. on this racetrack. I guarantee he has. And both those cars go by Skinner. Moving, moving Skinner back to the seventh spot. but has now slipped back to seventh position. Mark Martin working on Todd Bodine for the third position. Boy, just a great run tonight for that 91 car of Todd Bodine, but it looks like that Mark Martin is going to be able to pass him here as they come off the fourth corner. So Look at Todd paddle back. <laughs> he came back. <laughs> We've been following the story of Brett Bodine really all weekend, certainly today, and Brett is going to finish 25th in the point standings because Joe Nemechek's problems have dropped him to a 40th place finish, and we believe that Bobby Hamilton is going to finish 10th in the point standing because he is 6th. And the white flag is going to come out. There it is. Jeff Gordon takes the white flag. One more lap to go. And he's got about a six tenths of a second lead on Dale Jarrett with Mark Martin running back in third, but he's more than two and a half seconds behind. Gordon comes up on the 35 car of Dale of Darrell Waltrip. And another mark is established and put in the record books by the young man who has won his third NASCAR Winston Cup championship in 1998. Jeff Gordon wins the Napa 500. It's his 13th victory of the year, and he ties Richard Petty in a great battle for that fourth position between Jeff Burton and Brad, Todd Bodine. I don't know. I don't know who won. Who won that battle? It was tight. In grand style. Jeff Gordon and the Rainbow Warriors check up, chalk up another win here at Atlanta. The cheers continue to go up from the people gathered here in the grandstand and down on Pit Road. And the DuPont Chevy has made its way to that important piece of real estate. There are the Rainbow Warriors who have contributed so much to the success of the team. Well, they were looking up there. Next time we see them, they'll be looking down from the balcony of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. <laughs> and the champ emerges.
down to our McDonald's winner circle interview. Here's Dr. Punch. Well, a huge hug from his wife, Brooke, and a kiss, and uh, Cliff Pennell from R.J. Reynolds down here, Ray Evernham. He, he puts that nice, beautiful Winston Cup champions jacket on. <laughs> and first of all, Jeff, you're the winner of the Napa 500. What an effort. You were a rocket ship those final 10 laps. Well, I mean, I tell you what, Ray Evernham and uh, these Rainbow Warriors, not just incredible tonight, but uh, all all year long. I mean, man, what an incredible year! I I cannot. I, I know I've said this a million times, but I cannot believe this. Uh, you know, they they really put a lot of effort into this race car, into coming here to Atlanta. We were so determined to run well um, and to end this championship by running well all the way to the finish. I I don't think we ever expected to get quite what we got out of this uh, these last few races, uh, but. A lot of effort to, goes into to what these race cars are all about, and my team deserves all the credit for, for everything this year. Everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, I want to say hi to Rick and Linda and everybody at home. Man, we miss you. Can't wait to have you here next year, and we're going to do it again, I hope. But uh, I want to thank God. Uh, certainly blessed us tonight with getting this race in, and each and every one of these guys on this team, my goodness, that thing was incredible. Jeff, right behind you, that is the Napa 500 trophy, and I gotta believe that signifies that the Atlanta jinx is history. Well, you know, I learned a little bit when we came here to test uh, with Goodyear. We learned a lot on the car, and uh, of course, you got all that spoiler and air damage, it certainly helps. And, you know, what we needed, what we were lacking, I believe, was just downforce. Those guys earlier in the year and here last year had us covered on downforce. And I tell you one thing, I would have never been able to have made that pass on DJ there at the end if we uh, hadn't had the, the new air damage spoiler rule because you just, it's so hard to get up to a guy, let alone get underneath him. I got to take my hat off to DJ. Too. I, I love racing with Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin and the guys that uh, we run for uh, uh, run with for this championship this year and last year and uh, it was a lot of fun running with him and I, I really I, I I didn't give up but I did not think I was going to get by him there at the end he was so tough but I do want to say one quick thanks to everybody at DuPont DuPont Automotive Finishes they've been with us now for three championships in five uh, or six years and it's an awesome relationship and we sure do, sure do appreciate it. it's awesome. Jeff, we talked about it before the day began, but now it is reality. You have won 13 races in a season and join an elite group with the king, Richard Petty. Now that's one I certainly never, never thought would happen. Uh, you know, coming into this race, I, I was telling the truth. I said, you know, we're not really, we don't feel like we've got a winning race car, but I think, I felt like we had a good top five car. I think going tonight, you know, this race being run at night was a big advantage for us. The track really came to the way I like to drive the car, and it came to the way Ray sets it up. During the day, we were off a little bit, but we were coming. We were fast, but, man, when that sun went down, it got dark and cool. Man, this thing was unbelievable. I'm, I, there was a couple times I, I didn't even know if I uh, had to lift the gas. I know I didn't lift all, all the way off the floor for about 10 laps at one time, and it was blowing me away just how fast this place was tonight. You better rest up because you're going to have to lift a $2 million check in New York at the Waldorf Astoria in a few weeks. And, Jeff, I'm told that on a stage about 200 yards from us, your third Winston Cup trophy is awaiting you for presentation. You know, Jerry, that's, uh, it's unbelievable what, uh, what this year has offered me and, and really what this entire year uh, and, and this en entire career that I'm having, it, it's just a dream come true. And I'm so fortunate, so blessed to have people like Ray Evernham and, and the people at Hendrick Motorsports, the Rainbow Warriors that, that are on this race team. One thing I do want to say, too, uh, while it's fresh in my mind, uh, I want to say congratulations to Chevrolet. Uh, we won the Manufacturers Championship for them right here today. And uh, I tell you, that, that was something we really wanted to do coming out of this race. So we won a couple championships uh, today, and, and it's just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful life that I've been leading. And uh, I'm, I'm just so fortunate, so blessed, and, and uh, very blessed to have all the members of Hendrick Motorsports that make it all possible. Well, I will echo that. And, Jeff, we're going to follow you to the stage and watch you accept that third Winston Cup Champions Trophy. Congratulations again from all the fans and from all of us. Thank you, Jerry. I just I, I can't thank you guys at ESPN enough and all these fans, especially these loyal ones that stuck around tonight. I tell you, this just shows you how dedicated our NASCAR Winston Cup fans are. Whether they're pulling for me or not, I don't know. But, man, they sure were excited to, to see this race happen. And, uh, and they were all cheering there at the end because they saw a great race. And that's what it's all about. They may be raindrops falling or they may be tears, but I'll tell you what, 
This guy is a champion, and today he joins the ranks of the legends as he ties Richard Petty for 13 wins in a single season.